row. You said at the outset, you'd rather be in Central Park. Now you're overlooking Central Park. You got your wish, sir. Mr. Brock, I am not overlooking Central Park. I am I'm not sorry, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, although you have not been sworn or affirmed to tell the truth, every witness that testifies at parliamentary committee is expected to tell the truth. Have you, sir, told the truth to the committee so far? I have every word of it. I have a package of emails from the government, emails from the chief of staff to the assistant deputy minister of Trudeau's minister of global affairs, Melanie Jolie. She wrote a summary of the $9 million condo purchase. The email states, and I quote, both the Council General of New York and the head of mission, that's you, Tom Clark, have been instrumental throughout the process with the head of mission, again, you, Mr. Clark, providing the green light for the selection of the new residents. It is in writing by the department, Tom Clark, you, sir, was instrumental in the condo purchase on Billionaire's Row. So again, Mr. Clark, when did you raise the need for a new residence with the Liberal government? Mr. Chair, I will repeat, I had no role whatsoever in deciding to sell the old residence, buying the new residence, or its amenities, or its location. That email that you're referring to has a couple of addendums to it that I think are important. Number one, it was corrected. That was a person who was not involved in the process of this. I only became aware of this email less than 48 hours ago. I, too, was taken aback by what was in it because it was simply wrong. It wasn't you, true. Mr. Clark, let me stop you right there. I don't believe you. Canadians don't believe you. Are you trying to suggest that a head of mission in any country in the world would be completely shut out, would be completely uninvolved with the acquisition of your own residence? No Canadian believes you, sir. This was not a typo. This was a deliberate, focused sentence regarding your involvement. And the timing, sir, is crucial. The email I referenced was sent out June 17, 2024. The story of the $9 million condo on Billionaire's Row became known to the Canadian public on July the 11th. That was a huge embarrassment to the Canadian government. And I'm sure a huge embarrassment to you, Mr. Clark. Your involvement was documented well before we have the receipts. The department's pathetic attempt to cover up for you was issued on July 25, after all of the controversy, after all of the pushback from politicians, from Canadians who are struggling to put a roof over their head, who are lined up at food banks, who are starving, People who go to the food banks were actually, you know, uh, donating to the food banks. And you're sitting on billionaire's row, sipping coffee from a $6,000 coffee machine. You can appreciate how appalling that is to Canadians. So again, sir, I ask for honesty. When did you bring up the need for a new residence? Mr. Chair. I will repeat once again, and please, if you wish, you can put me under oath on this. I had nothing to do with the decision to sell the old OR. I had nothing to do with the decision to buy the new OR. I had nothing to do with deciding on amenities or its location. It's funny, Mr. Clark, 19 previous council generals to New York since 1961 have all enjoy, enjoyed the lavish amenities, the wonderful location in Midtown Manhattan of the Park Avenue residence until you, sir, were appointed to the position. And within months, sir, of you appointing the position and within months of Justin Trudeau visiting you and you hanging out in a motorcade 
in downtown New York with streets closed. All of a sudden, there's a talk about a new residence and a push to get you into Billionaire's Row. You said at the outset, you'd rather be in Central Park. Now you're overlooking Central Park. You got your wish, sir. Mr. Brock, I am not overlooking Central Park. I am I'm not sorry, in Mr. Clark. Tower. I have to interrupt. Yeah. That is our time, but I think you'll probably.